What's up guys, today I'm going to be taking a look at the G.I. Joe Classified Series Cobra Island Exclusive Gabriel Barbecue Kelly Action Figure. This came in totally unexpected, so once again shout out to my local collector store Robo Robo for delivering the goods early. So here's a quick look at the box. I really like the artwork in front. It's got these warped colors, kind of like heat vision, and also conveying that he's literally in the heat of battle. At the top of the box, he's got number 32. And on to the bottom, some product information and the barcode. Moving on to the side, it's got the same style of artwork and some fancy flames and sparks at the bottom. Moving on to the back, we're actually zoomed into two different locations on Cobra Island this time. And we can compare the locations on the back of the box with the Viper box. As you can see, different locations. And moving on to the last side of the box. He's got a couple symbols over here to show his skills. This looks like he's knowledgeable in chemicals and also capable of providing aid to his fellow Joes. So let's go ahead and get him open. Out of the box, the action figures in the middle of the tray. He's got a small handgun, two axes, a hose, as well as a backpack. First up, taking a closer look at his backpack, it's cast in a dark grey plastic with three tanks at the top. These tanks are painted in an orange with dark grey paint down the middle of the tanks. There are symbols very cleanly printed over here in black and white, warning the operator to take care when handling these chemicals and the different types of fires that the chemicals can put out. There's nice sculpting detail down the bottom of the backpack, some knobs over here in the middle, as well as a pipe over here for fluid regulation. Moving on to the inside of the backpack, it's rather plain with not much detail on the inside. And the backpack can peg on to the hole on his back. Next up, he also comes with a tube as well as his handgun. They're both cast in a dark grey plastic. The tube has identical connectors sculpted on each side. And there's also a ribbed texture all the way down the tube. This tube is also flexible. As for his gun, it's got some details on it like the nozzle at the front as well as the trigger and a distinctly shaped pistol grip. And moving on to the other side of the gun, we see similar details. You can pack one end of the tube into the handgun like so. And the other end of the tube also connects to the connector on his backpack. He holds the handgun just fine in his left hand. It wouldn't make sense for him to hold it in his right since the tube is extending from the left side of the backpack. The handgun also slots into the holster on his left thigh. And the tube looks kind of awkward sticking out just like this. There's always the option to tuck the tube into the space between his back and his backpack like so. So now he ends up with a sleeker silhouette. And here's a closer look at the bigger axe that's cast in the dark grey plastic. There's a curved grip at the bottom with shape to fit his fingers. As well as some ribs over here for a better grip. The blade itself has got sharp paint applications of silver on the cutting edge. And of course he holds that axe just fine in one hand. As well as looking pretty cool holding the axe in two hands. The axe also fits very snugly into the clip on his backpack. And lastly he comes with a smaller axe. Also cast in a dark grey plastic. Silver paint for the handguard as well as the cutting edge of the blade. Very cool sculpted grip details for the handguard as well as the grip. Very nice serrated detail on the inside of the blade as well. And we see the same sort of detail on the other side. A smaller axe fits snugly into both of his hands as well as also slotting nicely into that C-clip on his right thigh. And once again, we see all accessories have their storage on the action figure. So right now, barbecue goes hands-free and this is really awesome from Hasbro. An overview of barbecue sculpt. His head, vest and arms are all new parts. From his neck down, his torso, his hips and his legs are all part reused from Destro. That sculpt reuse actually makes sense because that bulkier Destro body makes him look like his suit is lined with fire protection heat shielding and therefore he should actually look bulkier and bigger than the regular Joe like Flint. Zooming into his head sculpt, it's cast in a dark grey plastic. Simple, clean and beautiful plain applications for the silver of his mask, the lining around his visor, as well as the glossy black paint on the visor itself. I like that the simple mask is even given details, like the ribs on the side, as well as the clip on the nose. Moving down to the left side of his head, it's a sleek helmet design, but it's enhanced with elements like the vents at the top, as well as the ventilation tube they're running down the side of his left jaw. And he's got a circular earpiece sculpted over here. Moving on to the back, a very clean and smooth design, and we see the same earpiece and vents down the right side, just without that ventilation tube. Moving on to his vest on his torso, he's got a chunky design. It's cast in a dark orange plastic with dark grey paint applications on the top and a close to black paint applications for the tank 
and the pouches. He's got a high tech collar over here, meant to protect him from the flames. It looks like that collar is attached to some breathing apparatus over here that goes down into this tank. I absolutely love this hit of vibrant green paint over here, possibly looking like an LED indicator on the tank, and that green contrasts with all the colors on the figure, making this detail really pop. That tank also has some tech detail on the top, as well as the bottom, and we finish off the front of the vest with a couple of pouches over here, as well as the belt buckle. As we move to the side of the torso, you will see the barbecue is made up of a couple of shades of colors. There's a lighter orange for most of his jumpsuit, the darker orange on his vest, that dark grey on his shoulders and his gloves, as well as a darker black for the rest of the details and accessories on him. The arms are a brand new sculpt, a very cool and sharply painted utility pouch that's strapped onto his bicep. And we also have the darker orange paint on that elbow pad. On the inside of his forearm, the gauntlet and the glove is mostly painted a dark grey, but there's also a hit of dark orange on the inside. On the back of his torso, you can see some of the sculpted dents on his vest. Those dents could have benefited from a slight wash to bring out the detail. Moving on to his right arm, he's got a black armband. A little bit of the armband over here that's not painted black to the edges, but that's a small thing. Also a very interesting logo that's sharply printed over here in silver on his armband. And once again, I realized on his gauntlet and his glove, there seem to be two different shades of grey over here. A lighter shade of grey for the armour on the outside of the forearm as well as the back of the hand. And down to his legs, they're mostly cast in that bright orange plastic with dark orange for the knee pads. Now from the legs down is where this figure starts to look a little boring, because aside from that paint on the knee pads, there's not much else on the legs to bring out the details, and it ends up looking rather plain, kinda looking like a prison jumpsuit. And onto his boots, they're cast in a dark grey plastic with the same tech detail running down the front and the top of the shoe that we've seen on Destro. Onto articulation, his head is on a ball hinge at the top and a ball at the bottom of his neck. So his head goes 360 rotation, able to look down that much. Most of his range is hindered by that collar and also able to look up that far. He's got a slight butterfly at the shoulders that go backwards that much as well as forward that far. Swivel hinge at the shoulders for 360 as well as going out that far. Upper bicep swivel so that goes 360 as well as a double hinge elbow that goes beyond 90 degrees, mostly because of his bulky sculpt. Swivel hinge at the wrist for 360, and since it's a trigger hand, it articulates down as well as up. He's also got a right trigger hand, and finally Hasbro has learned their lesson. The hinge on his right wrist finally articulates down as well as up. He's got the same sculpt as Destro, so he probably has an ab crunch in the middle of his torso, but you're not able to use much of that because of his really thick vest. He's got a ball joint at the waist, so that gets you 360 rotation, as well as some forward bend and some backward bend as well. So that should make up for the lack of use of his app crunch. Anyway, I wouldn't expect Barbecue in his thick fire protection suit to be crunching forward and crouching that much. He's got drop down at the hips, and the ball joints get you pretty good range sideways, as well as a decent spread forward and backward. He's got an upper thigh swivel that's disguised by the two holsters on his thighs, so the thigh swivel lets you rotate outward as well as rotate inward. Double hinge at the knees, so that's good range. Swivel just above the boot, that gets you 360. Ankle tilt upwards that far, as well as downwards. And finally, a pretty generous ankle pivot outwards as well as inwards. His scheme of articulation is pretty much G.I. Joe standard and you can get him into all sorts of poses, becoming an all-action firefighter. Even though he loses the use of his app crunch, I don't think that necessarily prevents you from getting him into convincing firefighting poses. Size-wise, Barbecue stands at just under 6.5 inches to the top of his helmet, or just under 16.5 centimeters. For our size comparisons, here he is with Roadblock and Commando Snake Eyes, Scarlet and Lady J, Cobra Commander and Zartan, Cobra Trooper and Cobra Viper, some Marvel Legends, and some Star Wars Black Series. Barbecue is a fantastic figure in hand. The only downsides are that his legs look really plain and lack detail, and he loses the use of his ab crunch in his torso because of the bulky vest. However, it is the bulkiness of the vest and the sculpt of the figure that makes him realistic and looking like a proper firefighter. The accessories and backpack also take him to the next level and shows him well equipped to put out fires in a combat environment. And lastly, his color scheme makes him rightfully stand out from the rest of the Joes and he will pop on your shelf. 
the figure is definitely a recommend for me. Please like and share this video, let me know what you think in the comments below and subscribe to my channel for more toy reviews. Thanks for watching, take care and stay safe.